Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I am Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Lawmakers are stepping in to ensure that students come first. Also tonight, cuts across the board to ensure government savings. And local travelers create a petition to save a local airline. And sports, looking for a weekend activity? This one might just be the one for you. Stay with us, we have these stories and more up next. Everybody feel it come around with the rhythm, it's a sound. If you feel it come around with ground with ground, everybody feel it come around with the rhythm, it's a sound. Everybody get down when we give it to you. Everybody feel it come around with We knew it was time to make these when we started asking things like, wouldn't it be nice to be able to get a warm cinnamon roll right now? And why can't this kind of muffin come from the same place as a McMuffin? And isn't your coffee lonely without company from a glazed apple fritter? Well, consider these our three resounding yeses. Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Wami and good evening Commonwealth. Today is Monday, March 6, 2023. The PSS Board of Education will take a fourth attempt to meet sometime this month. Lawmakers are stepping in saying there shouldn't be a fifth time. A bill that would change the number of attendance is underway. We respect PSS's autonomy, but we as legislation legislators also, you know, have our obligations and our fiduciary duty to our constituents. And when the the whole system is at risk, that's when we have to we may have to step in. Representatives Manny Kostru and John Paul Sablon are asking what happened to students first. The two representatives have pre-filed a bill that would reduce the quorum requirements for the NMI State Board of Education. By design, the, the PSS quorum is, is for, to, you know, for, for voting members. So this will reduce it to three. Kostru, who heads the House Standing Committee on Education, says they have been monitoring the recent happenings with the PSS board. And though they hope that the board will soon be able to meet, they want to be prepared. You know, we're talking about the largest, one of the largest uh, employers on island. So with tons of federal grants, a lot of moving parts, and things need to be handled accordingly and it's all time sensitive so we can't continue to you know to have these kind of issues 
The board has attempted to meet three times in the month of February, but has failed to establish quorum each time. They have also failed to organize its officers and conduct necessary business due to the absence of two particular members. In an issued release, Representative J.P. Sablon says, quote, with the availability of modern technology and the multiple reasonable accommodations made to allow the absent members appear one way or another, it is unfortunate that some members have elected not to perform their obligations, unquote. Castro, on his part, says PSS must be managed from the boardroom to the front line. In the event that it drags on, at least the quorum bill is, is ready. Another piece of legislation we can expect to see this Thursday is the salary amendment of cannabis commissioners. With the foresight that the NMI is facing a dire financial crisis, many local leaders are on board to save the government some money. Representative Diego Vincent Camacho has pre-filed a bill that would amend the compensation of CNMI Cannabis Commission members. So basically this bill is, um, as in the title, is to amend the compensation, more so to be consistent with other boards and commissions. Uh, which receive a stipend. This means instead of getting an annual salary of $55,000 per commissioner, they would be paid $60 for each meeting they attend. Camacho says this bill is somewhat similar to what Senator Selena Babauta has proposed on her side of the legislature, which is to amend the salary of each casino commissioner. They did most of the work in promulgating the rules and regulations. So that's been done, that's been set. So I think moving forward, it's, it's more of a policy-making board um, or regulatory board. Currently, there are only two commissioners and one managing director at the CNMI Cannabis Commission. If this bill passes, it will save the NMI government over $100,000 per year. Camacho will be introducing this bill on Thursday's House session. Local passengers launch a petition to save Mariother Southern Airways, who has since then doubled ticket prices. A petition to save Mariana Southern Airways and have more affordable traveling options in the NMI was launched over the weekend and as of press time has received over 1,300 signatures in support. Rhoda resident Abelina Mendiola created the petition, urging MSA, Star Marianas Air, the NMI government, and the Commonwealth Ports Authority to meet and possibly come to some arrangements. One of the main points in the petition focuses on reinstating the MSA contract or, quote, at least talk it out, unquote. MSA President and CEO Keith Stewart has already met with senators to discuss the contract termination and is hoping to meet with the governor soon as well. Governor Palacios told KSPN in an interview last week that even if they do meet, nothing will change. Since the termination of contract, MSA's ticket prices have doubled. A round-trip ticket from Saipan to Guam could cost over $500. When asked why ticket prices have increased, MSA's Vice President William Gayo says, quote, The simple answer is that after having our agreement cancelled, we could no longer provide our services for the same price. We are now offering three levels of pricing as seen on our website, unquote. The petition also urges CPA to consider the consequences of increasing airport fees, keep Asiana Airlines in the NMI, keep fares from United Airlines affordable, and hopefully bring more airlines in the Marianas. To learn more about the petition, you can visit change.org and search Save Our Airlines, MSA, Asiana, others. A big chunk of money is coming to the NMI ports. Let's take a look at some of their upcoming projects. 
the Commonwealth Ports Authority has been allocated $55 million under the bipartisan infrastructure law. Chairwoman Kimberly King Hines says she met with federal officials in Honolulu a few weeks ago to discuss the upcoming projects in the NMI under that allocation. So one of the priorities that we have right now is finally addressing the rehabilitation of the runway. So just to recap, um, you know, there's there's issues with the runway. We're currently in litigation with a construction company. And, but you know we cannot wait until that litigation has been completed to begin addressing the rehabilitation of the runway because this is a very safety sensitive issue. Hines says since her tenure as board chairwoman, they have been trying to loan from agencies such as CDA and USDA, but have been unsuccessful due to the current litigation. We've worked really hard to do and we've been successful in doing is convincing the FAA to give us the money and to be able to qualify this project um, under these new infrastructure entitlements. And so that's the discussion. Another big topic discussed is the ask for a supplemental funding for CPA operations. During the pandemic, CPA was successful in presenting their case to federal partners for assistance due to no traveling. Now they are arguing the same case under a different circumstance. We are not Hawaii where you have droves of tourists that are coming in from the mainland, right? Um, so even though you don't have a robust Japanese market, you, you, you have folks from the mainland who are traveling in, whether it be spring break, you know what I mean, wedding destination, things like that, right? Um, and, and, and it's cheaper because of, you know, you, you have a lot of carriers, LCCs flying from the east coast, um, the west coast to Hawaii. This is not the case here. You only have very limited, a limited market pool. You have Japan and you have Korea. Japan right now is still recovering and so is Korea. And so, you know, when you're looking about sustainability of the airports and being able to continue operating at the level that can accommodate um, <clears throat> additional arrivals, then, you know, we're going to need a little bit help. Other projects discussed were the pavement for Saipan Commuter Road and replacement of the road canopy. All right, coming up, women and their work are featured and celebrated this month. Stay tuned. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Saipan Community School traveled south to Guam this weekend for the Tumon Bay Music Festival. The students had very important carry-on items this past weekend on their United Airlines flight to Guam. The accompanying flight crew even let the kids provide some pre-flight entertainment.
on Sunday, it was a musical afternoon at Epau Beach, nestled on the shores of Tumon Bay, just adjacent to the Guam Hilton Resort and Spa, with a breeze that alternated between gentle and stiff. The weather cooperated, most of the time anyway, for the Tumon Bay Music Festival, and the Saipan Community School was the opening act of this year's musical buffet. Larry Lee and his son Kui are the school's ukulele instructors. We are 24 7th and 8th graders performing here at the Tumon Bay Music Festival uh, at the amphitheater at Ipau Beach Park. David Park's an 8th grader at Saipan Community and he runs down the playlist. We're going to be performing At My Worst by Pink Sweat. We're going to be playing Wipeout, very classic. We're also going to be playing This Is Me from The Greatest Showman and Shake It Off by Taylor Swift and I still haven't found what I'm looking for. A day earlier, the students performed at the Micronesia Mall in a competition that was judged. So it starts in third or fourth grade, depending on the class, and Mrs. Wingfield started it in 2020. She came to our um, performances yesterday and she saw us win gold, which was really exciting and it was like seeing the person that made it all start be there for like a top moment when we got gold for ukulele. And the students that are our eighth graders right now, who are right over here, um, started with her when they were in the third grade. Emma Sablon says she practices three times a week at school and two times a week at home. Uh, what's your favorite thing about playing the ukulele? Um, that we can have fun together, like we can, we can learn how to play the ook and we can travel like how, what we did right now, yeah. What was it like playing on the airplane the other day? Oh, um, uh, it was fun. We got to play on the airplane because we, we can let other people know that we're traveling and with our instruments. After the press conference, time to get down to some jamming. The students enter from stage left, armed with their instruments and their music. And it's time for the first number, the opening act of this year's Tumon Bay Festival. month is celebrated in Central Garapen. Let's check it out. March is proclaimed as Women's History and International Month. Hired Regency Saipan along with the Department of Community and Cultural Affairs are joining the celebration. A special exhibit featuring resident female artists and their crafts was launched on Thursday. We are proud to present you at every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for the whole month of March, different artists, female artists, who will be coming out to showcase their artworks, demonstrate to teach our tourists, and hopefully be able to sell their items while they're here. It'll be a month-long program, and I hope that we can see you all come and support our artists. Hope to see your customers come and learn from our artists. But most of all, I hope that we keep this collaboration going in the years to come. The exhibit features handmade fashion jewelry and other crafts, all made by local women. The hotel's general manager, Simon Groff, says Hyatt is a global company, but has 40 years of history here in Saipan. Understanding of how powerful mentoring um, and encouraging local talents and female artists to life it is our commitment at providing leadership, growth, diversity, equity, 
and inclusion. Um, height is mentoring specifically in the female leadership. And to give you some understanding, since 2019, we have grown 173 um, mentors, pairs to date, and right now, in 2023, 59 is in the making in the current program across 18 countries. So we hope that our efforts here on Saipan display a role model to all future female leadership, uh, artists and professional leaders alike to come. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We have sports up next. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. Bring your friends in for the best night out at Godfather's Bar in Garibu. Sing along to your favorite hits with live music from the Gigolos. Godfather's has daily food and drink specials, like Taco Tuesdays. The best pizza on island every day of the week. Located on Palm Street in Garibu. Come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. J's 5K Bubble Color Run is happening this Saturday at the Garapan Fishing Base. Showtime is 5 a.m. and go time is 6 a.m. or depending on the sunrise. There are free food, drinks, family-friendly activities, and a lot of awesome prizes. Free t-shirts to the first 1,000 registrants. Early registration until Friday, March 10th is $10. Race day registration is $15 and a group of four registration is $35. You can pick up registration forms at Triple J Motors on Beach Road, Hertz, Dollar Rent-A-Car in Garapan, Pele Superfresh and Truckload Store, and the Surfrider Resort Hotel in Chalankanoa. Proceeds will go to the Commonwealth Cancer Association and Make-A-Wish Foundation. For more information, you can call 670-287-6503. The Northern Mariana Sports Association will recognize athletes for their achievements in the 2022 at the Namasa Awards Banquet. 
NAMASA will honor prominent NMI athletes who excelled in their respective field of sport. A selection of committee comprised of representatives from each federation submitted nominations and voted for the athletes deserving of recognition for their sportsmanship, character, commitment to improve, perseverance, and achievement in sport. Awardees are eligible to be named Athletes of the Year and will be recognized during the annual NAMASA Awards Banquet. The banquet is scheduled for tomorrow, March 7, 6 p.m. at Crown Plaza Resort, Saipan in Garpen. And my athletes, coaches, and officials will be preparing for tomorrow night's event. Now for those who may have forgotten how a sports banquet is celebrated, maybe this sports classic will bring back some memories. Let's go back to 2015. Namasa hosted its largest ever sports banquet. The Tan Su Lin Foundation sponsored the ceremony, which included life-size cutouts of the Athletes of the Year. Multi-sport athlete Gabby Ray starred in athletics and basketball and soccer. The Marianas High School student was most proud of being a key member of that women's soccer team that won our first international game. Yeah, you did a lot. Uh, of all the things that you did in 2014, what are you most proud of? Uh, our win in the EFL tournament. It was the first women's win. The male student athlete, 13-year-old tennis player, Robbie Shore. Surprised? A little bit. A little bit? What was your biggest accomplishment in 2014? Uh, going to Australia, competing for second. Another multi-sport athlete, Rachel Abrams, is a record-breaking sprinter and arguably the island's best female basketball player. She was easily selected as top female athlete. Mm -hmm. What is the thing you're most proud of? It will be um, breaking my personal best in the 200 meter contest. Yeah. I was really proud of that. What do you like more, uh, basketball or track? That's a hard one. <laughs> I can't decide. <laughs> Micro Games gold medalist in the 400 meters, Bayo Nyongor, was voted the top male athlete of 2014. All right, 2015, what are you looking forward to? What is your goal? Uh, same, break more records. Uh, maybe set a 49. For the 400. <laughs> What's your better event, the 400 or the 400 hurdles? Uh, 400 meters. Yeah. Bertha Chong Tudela, who dominated volleyball in the 70s and 80s and was also an outstanding basketball player, was voted to the Sports Hall of Fame. And so was sprinter Tony Ichuo, who's never slowed down. Your reaction when you heard it? Oh, well, I was surprised. Are you still running? Still running. When are you going to stop running? Uh, probably when I cannot become my pin in the moment. Dr. Manny Sablon, an outstanding shortstop in the 60s and 70s, and a seven-time manager of the year, was selected for his baseball accomplishments. Of all your accomplishments, you did so much in baseball. What are you most proud of? The team. The whole team. <laughs> Chris Camacho received the Hall of Fame plaque on behalf of his brother, Greg C. Camacho, one of Saipan's all-time greatest sluggers. The men's national soccer team was selected as best team of 2014. They notched the first ever NMI victory over a FIFA member. Well, they'll have to share that heavy Laddie Stone trophy. It's team sport. Soccer is a team so who sport. gets the trophy? Well, I think we're probably going to give it to Joel. He needs to do some curls. <laughs> national swimming coach Jacoby Wingfield won Coach of the Year. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Gold's Gym, and today we're going to show you a Bulgarian split squat, a fantastic lower body exercise that should be a main staple in your training. Now the first thing we want to address is the rear foot placement. Now whether it's toes on or toes off, just find what's comfortable for you. The bigger issue we want to tackle is the height of the box or bench. You see when you set up on a box or a bench that's too high, that inherently puts an aggressive stretch on the front of your hip. Oftentimes, that sensation will take away from the working leg, the leg that's on the floor. 
And when you start to add load in this faulty position, you're bound to run into some problems, particularly if you got some mobility restrictions. So Jamila's gonna set up. She's gonna descend with control, and from there, just stand tall. And for the case pin weather report, partly sunny with scattered showers and thunderstorms. East northeast wind 15 to 17 miles per hour and gusts up to 23 miles per hour. Tonight mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms. East northeast wind 6 to 15 miles per hour. High 85, low 78, humidity at 85%. Tomorrow partly sunny with scattered showers and thunderstorms. Southeast wind 6 to 8 miles per hour. High 85, low 78. Marine forecast combined seas of 6 to 8 feet will decrease to 5 to 7 feet tonight. Expect an increased shower and isolated thunderstorms potential over coastal waters for much of the week as a trade wind throw in the racks with an approaching shear line. East wind 10 to 15 knots, wind waves 2 to 3 feet, northeast swell 6 to 7 feet. Sunrise will be at 6.31 a.m., high tide 6.48 p.m., low tide 1.48 p.m., and the sunset 6.25 p.m. And there you have it. That is your Monday edition of the news, sports and weather here in the Marianas. Thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a great night and we'll see you back here on Wednesday.